All right, so continuing from where we got that break. So I was saying that we were previously looking at this before we went off on the break. This is the topic that we were on. So we were on operations with numbers and operation with numbers here, we are referring to what we call binary operation. Now I was clarifying what we mean by binary operation. So we started off by looking at what we mean by operation itself. And we know that operation is an instruction that tells you what you are to do with the numbers that you're carrying out the operation on or what in some cases, if we don't have numbers, we may have symbols or, no, or letters. So just in a similar way, how we carry out operations on numbers, we may carry out operations on algebraic terms, which I will clarify a little later from now. I'll give you a little bit more definition as it relates to algebra, all right? So operations are the instructions that you carry out on terms. So when we talk about binary operation though, binary here is telling me that we are only operating on two things because the, the word binary means two, right? When we talk about binary numbers, we are talking about a number system that only has two numbers which is ones and zeros. So those are binary numbers. Binary operations would be an operation taking place between two values or two symbols or two letters, all right? So given any two numbers, there are various ways of operating on them apart from adding, subtracting, and multiplying and dividing. And of course, we would have already been um, we would have already been familiar with adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. Those are the four basic operations that we have been using throughout arithmetic, and we have carried them right throughout in algebra too as well. But we also can come up or define our own operation, so to speak. We can make up an operation which is different from adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. So when we carry out binary operations, these operations are usually operations that are made up, are defined. So you can make up your own operation. So here, this is a definition given to an operation. All right. Now in math, you will notice that we use the word if very often. So if anybody is familiar with what part of speech if is in English language, Anybody know what part of speech, what part of speech is if? I'm gonna say if I have any English major in here. Miss Cox, what part of speech is if? Miss Wilson? Yes, sir. What, what part of speech is if in English language? Conjunction, sir. If no. that is what you're referring to. No, it, it's not a conjunction. Oh. I don't want to try anymore. Any other bright English no. person here? Miss Wilson, you are going to say something else? No, sir. Okay. All right. So um, just to spare you the, the thought process of trying to figure out what part of speech it is, it is what we refer to as a supposition, right? 
And when, we re when we're using supposition, it really kind of telling you, suppose, right? So when we say if we're actually saying the same thing as suppose. So if A star B, or suppose A star B means the square root of A times B, then all of this statement here would have defined what your operation is, right? So we are saying, suppose our operation is A star B means that you have to find the square root of A times B. That's the operation, right? That's the defini definition of the operation. Now, why do we call it binary operation? Now we call it binary operation because it's only taking place on two symbols. So the star here is the operation, but the star is defined by the square root of A times B. So wherever you see this definition, so A star B means find square root of A times B. Now, if they tell you now, with that in mind, find four star nine, then it clearly means that you're going to treat the four like the A. So you're treating the four as the A, and you're treating the nine as the B, all right? Now, it's not difficult to see that all you're going to do is really substitute four where A is, and nine where B is. That's all you're doing. So wherever you have A in the operation and B in the operation, you're substituting them. Where A is, you would substitute it with four. Where B is, you substitute it with nine. All right, so with that said, four star nine, you would say A equal to four, B equal to nine. Therefore, four star nine would be the same as the square root of four times nine, right? And you could simplify that in different ways. So one way you could simplify this, you could work out what is on the square root sign, four times nine, give you 36. And then you know that the square root of 36 would be equal to six. So that's one way of, of simplifying it. Another way of simplifying it is that whatever, however many terms are being multiplied under the square root, you can multiply them as separate square roots. So the square root of four times the square root of nine would be the same thing as the square root of four times nine. Now, when you separate them like this, it gives you a little bit more advantage in simplifying smaller numbers rather than a bigger number. Because if you find the product of four times and you get 36, now you have to think about finding the square root of 36. Or if you just found the square root of four by itself, then the square root of nine, square root of four equals to two, square root of nine equals to three. Then you're finding the square root of smaller numbers and so it is easier to calculate. So now we have two times three give you six, which which give you pretty much the same answer as when you find the square root of 36. So you whichever way you approach it, you will arrive at the same answer. But I will suggest, however, that for the sake of multiple choice, you may want to find it. You may, you may want to go this way because it will make your, your life easier in calculating where, you're, where you don't have any calculator to use. All right, so for multiple choice where you don't allow to use calculator, you may want to take this approach. All right, so I hope that is something that you will remember whenever you come across any multiple choice and doing these questions. All right, any questions so far? Let me hear if there's any question 
about what we're doing. First, um, can you go over that um, question, please? All right. So, um, would you like me to take a different approach or would you like me to just go back through what I have just gone through? The same one. All right. So with, with binary operation, usually you are given the operation in terms of an if statement. So this if statement is the definition for what the operation is going to be. Now, A star B means that you're finding square root of A times B. Now, A is one symbol, B is another symbol. So the star here would be like a plus sign, a minus sign, uh, addition, I mean, a multiplication, a division. But the only thing that we need to know here is that the star means that you have to find the square root of the two numbers that we are operating on. Let's find the square root of the product of the two numbers. Following so far, Ms. Trivia? Yes, sir. All right. So once we understand the meaning of the operation, if we are given letters or numbers with the same operation, then four star nine simply means that we want to write this just as how this is written here. So we would have to have square root of four, Remember now, you're replacing A with a number, and you're replacing B with a number, and it is algebra, so we know there's an invisible multiplication sign between them. So it must appear once you put in numbers. Multiplication sign must reappear, so we have 4 times 9. You follow that so far? Yes, sir. All right, so from there now, all you have to do is just work out what is on the right-hand side here to get your answer. And as I was saying, we can work it two ways. We can go ahead, do the calculation of the numbers under the root sign. So four times nine, give you 36. And then you find the square root of 36, you will get six. Or the other way, you could find the square root of each of the number first. So you would say square root of four times square root of nine. Say so do the square root first of each of the numbers. So square root of four give you a two. You put what a multiplication sign, the square root of nine give you three. After you find the square root now, then you do the multiplication between the two numbers. So we have two times three, you get six. So I was saying that you could work it this way by multiplying the numbers under the root sign, then find the square root of what you get. Or you could find the square root of each of the number under the root sign by itself. Then you multiply. Whichever way you go, you will arrive at the same answer. But I was saying the advantage in doing it this way is that it gives you smaller numbers when you're finding the square roots, right? And in so, in the event where you don't have any calculator, you may want to do it this way. Let us think of, say, for instance, we have, um, let's say we are given the square root of, all right, so we say 49 times, um, 36, all right? 
if you are to say multiply out what we have underneath the square root sign first, obviously when you multiply 49 by 36, you're going to get some big number, right? Following Miss Trivia? Yes, yes, sir. Right. Now, by multiplying out and get that big number without a calculator, to find the square root of that big number is going to be very cumbersome are very challenging, very difficult. But by just looking at each of the numbers, you see that it is easier if you just find the square root of each of the numbers because we know that the square root of what? 49 times the square root of 36. So we know that the square root of 39, which number is square to get, sorry, 49. Which number is square to get 49? Seven. Oh. Seven. So that would give, give us seven. Which number is square to get 36? Six, sir. Six. So you would have now six, seven, give you one. Six, seven, give you 42. You follow? Now, if you, yes, yes, sir. if you were to multiply 49 times 36, you would have gotten a big number whose square root is actually 42. Okay, sir. Could you, could you, would have, fig, could you have figured that out without using a calculator? It will take a long time, a long time. Right, and for a multiple choice, you don't want to be wasting that time. So if you take this approach, it would make your life easier. All right, I hope that is clear to everyone. Yes, sir. All right, so still on the topic of binary operation. So this is just one example of a binary operation. Now here, another example. Now what you notice that for each question, each question is defined different. So you may have A star B mean one thing in one question, and A star B means a different thing in another question. So for each question, you have to take it based on what the definition you are given. So for this question here, for the previous question, A star B would have meant the square root of A times B. In this question though, A star B now going to mean something totally different, which is just half bracket two times A minus B. So even though we are using the same star, the operation is defined different for this question. So you must always pay attention to how it is defined for each question. All right, so for this question, we see that A star B that would be equal to half 2A minus B. Now, if we are asked now to find what is five star two. So five star two then, remember what we are saying is that what we have on the left-hand side of the equation, we just compare them. So we notice that the A comes first. If, and then now the star, then the B. For this part down here, we see that the five come first, then the two, then, then the star, then the two. So if we compare these two, we can say the five is the same as the A, the B, the, the two is the same as the B. So on the right hand side, wherever we see A, we're going to replace it with what? Five. So wherever the A is, we replace it with five. So A is the same as five. So wherever A is, we replace it with five. So two 
times five. So we're just pretty much substituting. So we have two times five minus B. But we see that if we compare them, B is the same as two, or two is the same as B. So if we minus B, it means that for B equal two, we're just going to minus two on the right hand side, right? So here now we do the calculation, work out what is in the brackets first. So two, five, 10 minus two. All right, so continue working out what is in the brackets. We now subtract two from 10, we only have eight remaining. Now, what this really is saying that we are multiplying half by eight, all right? So we know half times eight is the same as a half times eight over one. Now you can cancel, two into itself goes one, and two into eight goes four. So in the numerator, we have four times one, give you a four. The denominator one times one give you one. So we get four over one, which is the same as just four. If you wish, from here, from here, if you just do your cancellation, So 22 goes one and 28 goes four. You can do it that way or if you wish, you could multiply out by the eight and that would just give you eight over two. And then now you said two into eight goes four. So whichever way you want to approach it, would you would lead to the same answer. Any questions, students? Let me see your hand. All right, is everybody clear and comfortable with what was just explained? Let me see your hand. All right, so that's good. Now, now that we have an understanding of what we're doing, then the next step for us is to try some, to practice. Because it is in practice that we test our true understanding. Because when we start to do the questions, if we truly understand it, then we should get them right or get them correct. If we don't get them all right, that means there are some things that we still don't understand. So we're going to, I'm going to ask you to start off doing these exercises. I want, want everybody to do these exercises, then I go through them with you. So we have about, I think it's about 10 questions. But I'm going to ask you to do the first three now, then we go through these, then we do the next, then we go through those and so on. So I'm going to give you at least, say, three, three or five minutes to do these three. So I'll give you five minutes to do these three. And then now we go through them together, then we move on to the next set. All right, guys, so you may go ahead, try these on your own and then now we go through them together.
All right. Is is there anyone who who is ready to do any of these questions? Who would like to do the first one? Sir, let me try. Who is that now? Trivia. Okay, go ahead, Trivia. Okay, I have. I'm from Three, um, three times, um, three to the, um, three square root one is equal to two times three plus one. And two times three, six plus one equal to seven. Okay. Uh, okay. Let me write what you say you have. So you have three. A, yes. What else? Star one. Star one is equal to two times three because um a is equal to three so i have two times three there why am i writing sorry <laughs> go ahead plus one since b is one Then I have two times three is six plus one equals seven. Plus one equals All right. seven. All right. Anybody else get that answer? Let me see the answer. Those who get that answer. Okay. All right. Very good. Thanks, Miss Trevia. That's correct. Okay, sir. All right, who else want to do the next one? Quickly, let us just go to them. I will, sir. That's Miss Williams. Yes, sir. All right, go ahead. If X asterisk Y means 3X minus 2Y, find the value of 2 asterisk Y. Mm -hmm. since, X, since X asterisk Y equals 3X minus 2Y, therefore, Three. It's question two we're doing here. Yeah? Yes, sir. So two asterisk. So it's, it's two asterisk five. Yeah. So since since. So two asterisk five would give us one. It would be two times two minus two times five. Now remember here the x would three be three times two. Times two, right? So it is three times two. It's three three times. times two minus two times five. Subtract two times five. Two times five. All right. So that would be okay, six. Okay. So, so that would that would be six minus ten, which would equal to negative four. Okay. Anybody else get that answer? Let me see yes, that. sir. No, sir. Okay. Who somebody get a different answer? Let me see the answer of those who get a different answer. All right. All right. So that, that is actually correct. All right. Who wants to go next and do question three? I will, sir. Um, we want to give somebody else a try, Miss. I know you're okay, sir. me, sir. Enthusiastic. Who is that, Miss Miss Cox? Yes, sir. All right, go ahead, Miss Cox. So first, we have five asterisk three uh -huh. equal quarter bracket five plus three. Then equal quarter bracket eight. Is is it five plus three? 
Yes, sir. Five plus three. Okay. Quarter bracket five plus three. Yes, sir. Again. So what do you say? Five takeaway. Five subject. Oh, um, sorry, sir. Five takeaway three. Okay, five takeaway three. All right. Uh, let me write that properly. All right. So do the calculation now. Then we have equal quarter bracket two. So equal a quarter bracket, sorry, a quarter bracket two. And then? So then we, we said quarter, quarter mm -hmm. um, over. Two one and then we cancel. All right. So a quarter 